Hi everyone, today we're taking a look at Crossfire Legion, an RTS game based off an FPS game, which is really big in Asia and it's called Crossfire, funnily enough. The FPS is basically very similar in theme and look to the very original Counter-Strike in 1999, though it was made in 2007, so it just looks really old. And this RTS is clearly trying to be StarCraft 2 with some CNC thrown in for good measure. They are planning to release this into early access in hope of getting feedback to improve the game, and it's being made by Blackbird Interactive, the same team that brought us Homeworld Deserts of Karak, and are currently working on Hardspace Shipbreakers and Homeworld 3. Which begs the question if this company is so big and has a biggish publisher behind it in Cock Media, why they're planning to take this game into early access. I know, I know everyone does it now, but for me it will always be a thing for smaller companies to use and not ones with loads of backing. That is a personal pet peeve of mine, but let's talk about the game instead. So, SC2 meets CNC. Well, it's kind of a weird combination and there are going to be three factions in it, much the same as SC2. The first is Global Risk, a military organisation paid for by world governments and is currently available in the playtest and is basically the Terran from SC2. It has very similar base units. You have your marine, your tank, your jet with rockets amongst the other usual bits and pieces. The tank even deploys though just to an armoured position rather than into an artillery piece. The second faction is Blacklist, a private military company who work for the poorer nations, targeted at being more of a guerrilla warfare faction Honestly, it plays exactly the same way as the first faction, and most of the units are very similar to various CNC games units. There's a little bit of Nord infantry and buggies in there, there's a jet guy from RA2, there's an attack chopper with rockets, you get the idea. That faction feels very command and conquer. The third faction we will find out about in February, but we don't know exactly what it's going to be yet. Rumour is that it's going to be something completely different to the other two and very unorganised. Now, you'll be greeted by the game's splash screen when you first boot it up for a number of minutes before it takes you to the main menu. This is currently normal, though I'm unsure why. It is a heck of a long loading time for the game when it looks like it does. Once you actually get into the game, gameplay-wise, it does play like an old-school RTS. You have two resources to collect in a very similar fashion to StarCraft II. The base building and unit gameplay are very similar to the likes of StarCraft II and CNC. Spamming a single unit can often overpower an enemy force, aircraft being very powerful right now it seems because of the amount of rockets they spam. Each unit in the game has some kind of upgrade or ability, some are just bonus armour or rockets, others get activatable abilities which increase damage or rate of fire, or the tank for example gets a hold down position ability. The blacklist basic infantry get the ability to stealth and an upgrade done at their armoury means that coming out of stealth they get a huge damage boost for 20 seconds. The armoury upgrades are pretty standard, three levels each for infantry, vehicles and aircraft. And additionally, two abilities for each faction, the global risk get forward turrets which infantry can place, and also a production speed bonus for production buildings. Blacklist get their damage bonus out of stealth, and then also a stealth all units ability at the main base. Obviously used in conjunction together, they would be very powerful. The game also has additional commander abilities, and there will be various commanders to choose from at launch. Currently there is only one for each faction. The Global Risk Commander gives you a rally ability and an off-map artillery barrage, which is obscenely powerful right now, and if people don't move their units they will lose their entire force. The Blacklist get an ability to put down a healing spot, and the ability to teleport a group of units back to that healing spot. Think Chronosphere from Red Alert 2 with more limitations. The gameplay has some good ideas, but honestly most of it has been done before in other games, and right now those other games just play smoother. For a game that seems to be striving to be an SC2 clone, to some extent SC2 as I remember it just plays a lot smoother, granted also a bit faster. Now that said, they do have one feature set which I haven't really experienced in a game before, and that is the ability to make your army completely customised, not just selecting the commander, but also changing out the units for other units. Exactly what form that will take, I'm not sure. I don't know if it will just be other variations of the pre-existing units or completely new ones. What I will say is this sounds like a fantastic idea. However, it will lead to very specific meta in any ranked ladder where some units will hold significant favour over others. And currently there is no comment on if these units are unlockable, paid for content or otherwise. It's certainly something I can see being DLC fodder. The unit AI needs some work in my opinion, it has no concept of threat and will just randomly shoot at anything rather than units that actually have weapons. They also get stuck on each other a lot and won't get into range to fire. 
I get that there is micromanagement involved, but you know you could at least sort out the pathing. Graphically, it is a bit standard fare, nothing to rave about, although I assume this will improve as development progresses, or they're aiming at lower end machines and therefore it won't improve much. That said, I also feel it is currently chewing up a lot of system resources, perhaps due to that lack of optimization, but honestly it doesn't look that good that it should be eating up that much power. They need to look at that optimization quickly. They have released this development roadmap for quarter 1 2022. Technical test is now in Jan, then they reveal a new faction and first look demo in February, which I assume is going to be an extension of the current technical test for everyone or at least more people to try. Then in March we will see ranked games and finally in April you will have the army customization options and a mentorship program, whatever that is, and a public open beta. I can only assume the mentorship program is something where you teach other people how to play and they reward you in some way, shape or form. That's a rather rapidly progressing roadmap, let's see if they stick to it. All in all, I'm honestly interested to see how the game progresses, how the third faction plays, hopefully differently to the other two, and also what difference army customization will make in the long run. That said, there is this niggly feeling in the back of my mind that this game is biting at the heels of all giants without quite having the feel and oomph to outshine them. And it's a game that would need constant rebalancing for rank in the future, and I worry it may end up being released and left to its own devices, which leaves me having flashbacks to Command & Conquer 3, an EA's short-lived attempt at pushing competitive play. For now, it remains to be seen how this game progresses. However, they could potentially have a hit on their hands if they push the right buttons. However, I still have that fear in the back of my mind. The game is currently in technical test phase and anyone can sign up on Steam, so there's a link down below in the description. Thanks very much for watching, let me know your thoughts on the game down below if you try it out, and as always please do like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you all soon. Have a great week.